Brett, as you take a look at the change in sentiment over the past few weeks as coronavirus has taken hold, does that change any of your theses, your investment theses when it comes to small and medium sized businesses? It's a great question. We're continually focused on concerns we've had for years now, and it's been a matter of wondering when the next cycle will come. So I think core fundamentals are on liquidity, keeping leverage low, making sure businesses can withstand macroeconomic shocks or idiosyncratic shocks uh, is still the same concern, even more exasperated now. In addition to that, focused on any supply chain related risks from uh, Asia in particular. So have you been talking with some of your portfolio companies, the companies you invest in, about these types of risks? We are. We're focused on uh, making sure we understand key liquidity, potential liquidity needs, if there's any derivative uh, impacts that may not be as obvious but could come from an impact to you know, their company, again, whether it be on revenues or on the uh, supply chain side of their business, how do they get in front of those risks to mitigate them? When you talk about liquidity issues, this is one of the big concerns that companies will have debt maturing or financing needs that they can't necessarily plug at a time of potential volatility as well as a decline in revenues on the heels of the coronavirus. What are you doing to make sure that your companies don't face those pressures? First off, we focus on businesses that are uh, based exclusively in the U.S. The majority of their revenues come from the U.S., so they don't have zero exposure to risk, but they're mitigated from a risk perspective of certain international issues. Uh, beyond that, the focus is really making sure that we understand if they have any other debt, when does it come due? Uh, if they have any other liquidity potential needs, when might it come due to make sure you're getting in front of potential liquidity needs because it could take longer Ultimately, we are a capital provider, so that liquidity challenge is, frankly, what we are there to solve for them. So it's really just making sure that we understand the fundamentals of the business, tracking them on a monthly basis. Over the past five to ten years, there's been a flood of cash into private lending, into small and medium-sized lending, in part with the belief that you will get bigger returns and not necessarily the same types of liquidity pressures as you would in public markets if there, say, is a, a forced batch of sales. I'm just wondering, going forward, does that calculus change at a time of lowering expectations for returns all around? It's a great question. I, I think people's expectations for returns generally probably should be lower than they have been. I think folks like BlackRock do a good job forecasting different return expectations for uh, multiple asset classes, yet when we speak to investors, they're never looking for the same returns that most people are forecasting for long term. They're looking for higher returns. Uh, ultimately, I think that the focus has to be on fundamentals, people that are trying to get quick returns off of you know, market disruptions are generally hard to achieve. All right, so what is an appropriate returns target for a strategy like yours? That's a great question. Uh, first and foremost, our focus on capital protection, so focused on recession resilient businesses. If you look at uh, revenue data, it's a surprise to a lot of people that U.S. lower middle and middle market companies actually have historically over the past five years had higher revenue growth and less volatility. Part of that is because they don't have access to the quick capital markets. They don't have access to the amount of leverage that larger companies do, which sometimes that works out well for a larger company and sometimes it doesn't. Smaller companies tend to not have access to those tools and so they don't usually get in trouble as much. But I will um, mention there is such thing as too small. So startup related companies, I think, will likely face some real dramatic challenges if they're currently not cash flow positive as just a basic fundamental.